Hi everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'm sharing the first five cards that I created with the Hero Arts October 2020 card kit. Here I'm just showing you the stamp set and the coordinating dies. There is a coordinating die for each of the images in the stamp set and then you also get a bonus ornament die and there are two different I guess windows you can cut from that ornament which is also included. You got three different embossing powders and a clear sticky ink for the embossing powder to stick to. So I did a lot of prep work with this kit because I knew I wanted to create 10 cards and I wanted to try to make the process as quick as possible. So I showed you a couple sketches that I kind of drew out and this was mostly so I can determine how much I wanted to die cut. So here you can see I have so many tags. I cut them from different colored cardstock because I wasn't committed to any sort of color at this point. I just knew I wanted to create a tag for each card. So I gave myself a lot of options. I did have some leftovers but I was okay with that because I do like to um, add little tags to my packaging for my customers. So I just die cut more than I think I needed. Same with the um, image die cuts. I cut most of them from white cardstock, but I did a couple in blue, and I believe I die cut a couple images from the dark blue cardstock. So we're gonna get started with card one, and I'm just going to stamp out the two different bird images from the stamp set onto the white die cuts. Now, um, for the birds, I'm going to use the red embossing powder that came in the kit, so I'm just pouring over the powder onto the images. Now this was a little bit finicky because I decided to die cut ahead of time, but I saved a lot of time, so I felt like the trade-off was worth it because if I would have had to stamp emboss with several different embossing powders and then die cut one at a time for each card, I felt like that would have added a lot more time. So I was okay with this. You can see for the bells, I added some Hero Arts gold embossing powder to them. And now we can start the panel for card one. So I'm gonna start with my sentiment, which I wanted in the center of this red panel that I cut to, I believe this is three and three quarters by five inches. And I also added the two branches that are facing different directions. I spaced them apart underneath the sentiment so that there was a gap between them because I wanna add my bell in the center. And I'm going to gold heat emboss the branches and the sentiment. And while I have it in my misty, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it out onto this white oval, which I plan on adding onto a red ornament. This oval along with the more fancy oval comes in the uh, ornament die set, so you're gonna see that for a lot of my tags, I'm going to implement the oval and then the other fancier one. So for the tag, I thought it would be cool to just emboss the sentiment with gold, but then emboss the branches with red so that it coordinated with the birds. And so what I did was I removed the gold powder with a dry paintbrush and poured over the red powder. And I got lucky. Once I figured out that this worked, I did it a lot on my future cards because I was worried that the paintbrush would leave residue or something where it would cause like the static problem or the, you know, having the embossing powder stick where you don't want it to, but it did not um, because I think it was a dry brush. If you used a wet brush, that would not work. But here you can see I'm already kind of planning out my tag, but I'm going to set that aside and finish up the card first. And I thought it would be cool to create some sort of pattern in the background. When I got the kit, the first thing I thought of was a sweater because all these little icons can be grouped together to create a fun sweater pattern. And I think three out of my ten cards feature some kind of sweater design. So for this first card, I kind of spaced the larger icons like the tree and the present and um, the circle of trees as my larger elements and in between them I added the smaller snowflakes. So you just saw there that I lined up those different stamps on a row, trying to make them as straight as possible. I closed my misty door, I stamped out my first row, and to stamp out 
the rest of my rows, I'm using my Misty ruler over to the right to make sure that my rows are evenly spaced apart. And just by shifting it up on my Misty, I am able to continuously stamp this background. You can definitely mass produce this design, maybe using some different embossing powders, different colors. I think blue, silver, and white would be super pretty. I also decided to fill in the area next to the sentiment. I stamped these two branches. I did one going upwards and one going downwards. And I wanted to add some gold and white embossing powder for this panel. So on the top and bottom rows, I'm going to pour my gold powder. I'll also add my gold powder to those leafy branches on the side of the sentiment. And then for those center rows, I'm going to pour my white embossing powder. And I think having the combination of the red, white, and gold, it sort of resembles a sweater. At least that was the effect I was trying to go for. I think my next couple cards will look more like a sweater, but I was pretty happy with my first try with these stamps. Here I'm just heat setting the background. I'm gonna pull in my birds now and lay them over my sentiment and have my bell in the center, but I just felt like even with the white outline, they weren't standing in, out enough from the busy background. So I basically just created the same exact oval that I created for my tag. I gold heat embossed the same sentiment, I made the branches red with the red embossing powder, and then I added the fancy oval behind the white oval. And that fancy one is included in the ornament die set, and it was just like a nice little mat to add behind my white oval to help everything pop out. I popped up my birds with foam tape as well as my bell, and I'm also going to pop up my gold oval over the sentiment that I first stamped out. Now I still think this looks really cool without anything else added to it. I do like how the sentiment looks right now, but I really wanted to include the birds. But I think that you can definitely mass produce this design, like I said, with different colors. Right now I'm just adding vintage photo around the edges just to enhance that red color. And then I'm going to attach my ovals to the center, mat this panel with white cardstock, and then I will add the white mat on top of another red mat that is the same color red that I used for the embossed panel. And that just creates a really pretty frame. And then I thought just to finish this card off, I will add a couple gold sequins from Trinity Stamps. And that's going to finish up my first card. I really like how this one turned out. So this red panel was cut to cover my card base. So I'm just going to add some ATG tape, attach it to my 110 pound white Nina card panel and then that is going to finish up the first card. So for my coordinating tag I die cut a gold ornament and then from the center I cut the fancy oval to create a bit of a frame for my red ornament and then I popped up my white oval with foam tape and here I'm just attaching my birds to the top of the sentiment and my bell to the center of the branches. Same exact layout from the card. And for the back of my tag, I just die cut another red ornament and I'm going to gold emboss the sentiment Merry Christmas and one of the birds on top. I do like to dress up my tags, the front and the back, just in case my recipient decides to use it as an ornament. You know, sometimes the ornaments kind of twirl if you touch them. So I like that there is something on both sides. I do typically make the back side a little bit more simple, um, but it's something I do. I know not everyone does it. I also like to add another tag that's the same shape on the back because it adds a little bit more sturdiness and weight to the tag, which is again really great if the recipient plans on using this as an ornament for a couple years. So just to dress up the back of the tag, I decided to add a gold topper. And you might have saw at the beginning of the video, I had a bunch of gold and silver toppers cut out because I knew that would be a fast and nice way to decorate the back of my tags and for some of them I'll even use them for the front. So I did loop through some red and white twine and off camera I added a little red bow to the front of the tag and yeah that's going to complete my first little set. For my second card I'm going to do some ink blending so I'm going to use Salty Ocean, Blueprint Sketch, and Black Soot. I knew I was going to be adding snow bakes to the bottom of this panel so I'm only inking up the top two-thirds I'm starting with my Salty Ocean, and I'm blending on the inks with my Picket Fence Studios blender brushes here. 
And I always go from lightest to darkest and then darkest back to lightest just to make sure that everything blends nicely together. And I'm pretty heavy handed with my ink. I find that the more ink you add, the easier it is to blend with the inks. So um, yeah. But I do like how the black soot does darken everything. I wanted this to be a night sky. So I'm going to add some stars or snowflakes to the background using my Gonzai Tombi pearlescent watercolor. You guys know how I roll at this point. Pretty much everything gets a splash of Gonzai Tombi at this point. Um, I do like that it's white, but it's subtle. It's not like a blinding white. If you wanted a blinding white, which is great for snow, I would suggest white acrylic paint. So for my snowbanks, I wanted them to appear like they were glowing because they wouldn't be stark white at night. They would be glowing in a way. So I thought adding just a little bit of blue to the bottom and the top of the snowbanks, that would kind of create that glowing illusion. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, I just used whatever ink was left on that Picket Fence Studios brush. And I'm going to glue my back snowbank with art glitter glue. And then my, I guess, forefront snow bank, the one in front, is going to be popped up with foam tape. And then I'm going to take my die cuts. And at this point, they were not stamped, remember? They're just die cuts. But it's nice because I can still lay them out on my card and figure out how many I want to use. So this is where I am going to use those blue trees and I'm going to white heat emboss them. And it did create a kind of a cool effect because I like how the blue outline blends in with the sky. But for the rest of my images, I'm going to keep them with the white outline. So I'm going to use all three deer from the stamp set and Santa with his reindeer. Now, at first, I was like, I don't need a moon. I knew before starting this card that I probably needed a moon, but I told myself I didn't. So what did I end up doing? I created a moon so I just used a small circle die cut that out from gray cardstock I added a little bit of the black soot around the edges and then I sprinkled on the gonzai tombi as if there was snow kind of falling over the moon so now I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss and I'm not sure if I show it but I am heat embossing extra elements again for my tag but for my tag I only ended up using one deer so some of my tags are an exact replica of my card. Some of them are inspired by the card, and that's going to be the example for this one. So I'm going to silver heat emboss the deer, and this embossing powder is called Silver Lightning by Sparkle and Sprinkle. From my stash, I used silver glitter embossing powder, gold, white, green and dark blue. I have a plethora of embossing powders um, and I'm so glad I get to use them because like dark blue and green I don't get to use very often. So for my Santa I use the blue powder that came in the kit and for my trees I'm going to sprinkle white embossing powder over them. And I am throughout all 10 cards I use that little tiny square of clear sticky ink and I did not anticipate that it would last very long but it's still sticky after 10 cards and 10 tags so I'm pretty impressed with that um, sticky ink so here I'm just adding the white onto my trees and sometimes I just create a pile of embossing powder that I dip the die cuts in and you can definitely use your tweezers to avoid getting your fingers in there but I didn't care that much so I'm just going to heat set everything and my heat tool is is passing away as we speak um, in part two you're going to witness a potential fire hazard that could have easily burnt down my entire house because it like my tool started smoking has that ever happened to you my heat tool is probably six years old and the cap recently broke off so i don't know if it was the cap that's the issue or not but the cap was just plastic and i think it was just there so you didn't burn yourself um but yeah it's on its last leg and you're gonna see it in part two but anyway um we're now going to attach this scene you guys have been watching me kind of 
lay it out and now it, the embossing is all done so everything can be attached i'm gluing pretty much everything down with my art glitter glue all of the trees um, were glued flat and then the deer i popped up with itty bitty bits of foam tape which i spared you the pain of watching that happen and i'm just going to remove the tape off the deer pop them up over my snowbanks, and i also popped up my little santa so i realize now that i didn't have a sentiment and I thought the ho 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 would be super cute and tie in with Santa. So I'm going to stamp it out next to the prancing deer. And I took a risk by, you know, potentially ruining the entire panel. Um, but it stamped out nicely and I was able to heat set it with the blue powder that came in the kit. And then that's pretty much it. I'm just going to mount it onto my white card base. And that's going to complete my second card. So like I said, the tag is slightly different. Um, I'm going to do the same ink blending. So here I have a white 110 pound white Nina ornament. I'm going to use the exact same inks, Salty Ocean first, Broken China at the top. And I didn't bother to add the black soot because I knew there was going to be a silver frame on top that was going to cover a lot of the top of the ornament. But for the back side, I will add the black soot. So I'm doing the exact same thing on another 110 pound white Nina ornament. Here I'm just adding the black on top. And that way the back matches the front, but I'm not going to do much else with the back. I'm just going to white heat emboss the sentiment. So cleaning up my glass mat, grabbing my Gonzai Tombi and a paintbrush. I'll just splatter some pearlescent watercolor. So I want to make this tag a shaker, so I die cut a silver ornament and I cut an oval from the center to create the shaker frame. I am going to add a snowbank to the bottom of my blue ornament just to have a little ground for my deer to prance upon. And for my shaker bits, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Hobby Lobby during the holidays. It's literally something I look forward to every year. It's pretty sad, but there is a section of the store that is dedicated to Christmas embellishments. And it's all made in China. You know, this is my opinion, but it's basically crap. <laughs> it's like just plastic little embellishments, but it excites me. It gets me in the crafty holiday spirit. And every year I purchase something. And about five years ago, I purchased these little snowball, these little snowballs that I wanted to use for shakers. And I thought I lost them, but here they are. I found them years later. They're basically just styrofoam little white balls and they were perfect for my shaker tag here. I think that they do kind of look like snow. They're really fun. I definitely want to use them on a larger shaker card because as you can see that bag is humongous and um, you will witness that I spill them everywhere in part two. But here I am going to on the back of my tag stamp out one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I will white heat emboss it. I really loved all the sentiments from the stamp set. I think I was able to use them all for my 10 cards. So I'm going to add ATG tape and glue to the back of my tag and attach it to the front. Again, I will add a silver topper. I just feel like that finishes it off very nicely. And I'm going to use regular white thread for the loop of my tag and then I'll add a little white bow to the top of the tag and I do prefer to use either twine or thread for my tags because it's much easier to attach to presents but whenever I can I do like to use actual ribbon and I think for all 10 cards I use the combination of twine and ribbon so here is the second card set really cute I love the ink blending so for my third card, I wanted to create an all white and gold card. This is just a classic, elegant color scheme. I knew you can go wrong with it. So what I'm going to do is stamp out all of the snowflakes from the stamp set. You can see I mounted them onto an acrylic block. I am inking them up with the sticky ink from the kit. And I'm just randomly stamping them onto this panel. This time I did stamp out a couple off the panel so it looks a little bit more like a pattern paper 
And I will go ahead and pour my gold embossing powder over this entire panel. You can see I'm down to my very last bit of Hero Arts gold embossing powder. I think this came in the December kit from last year, so it's lasted a whole year. I definitely have to get more of it because it's my favorite gold powder. So I'll just heat set all those little snowflakes. This panel came together really quick. And I believe it's cut to four by five and a quarter inches. So I do want to have an ornament in the center. So I die cut a gold one, which I cut the oval from the center to create a frame and a white one. I end up going with a vellum back instead of a white. So you'll see that later on. But I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my images. I decided to go with two deer. I will have one deer on my tag and one on my card and then a couple trees. And I'm going to gold heat emboss all of them. And I feel like heat embossed cards are, in general, are really great for mass producing, especially if you were to stamp, heat emboss, and die cut all of your deer and trees ahead of time. You can create some really quick cards, no coloring is involved, and because especially metallic and glitter powders are so beautiful, you really don't have to over embellish or do a whole lot of extra work to create really pretty cards. And I think if you changed up the colors, you can create an awesome little card set. So you can have like three that are gold and white, three that are red and green, and maybe three that are blue and silver for maybe Hanukkah or something. So yeah, I could definitely see me creating a bunch of these. So here I'm laying out my ornament design and I didn't really like the white because it completely covered the snowflakes in the background, but I also didn't like it with just the gold frame because the snowflakes were too busy. So the best solution of muting down a background is to use vellum. So I die cut an ornament from some vellum cardstock. I added a snowbank to the bottom to ground my deer and trees, and then I added glue to my gold frame and glued the gold frame on top of the vellum. I then added the vellum on top of the background again and I still felt like it was just a little bit busy and that's because I have very thin vellum. Um, so I decided to just die cut another ornament from vellum and attach it to the back so it does mute it even more. But I do kind of like that frosted effect that the vellum gives. I did pop up both of my trees and my deer with foam tape. And now I'm going to work on the sentiment for this card. I'm going to gold heat emboss it onto some white cardstock, and then I will trim it to a rectangle. And then I use the joy and peace sentiment again. I think this was a nice one for elegant designs. And then I'm going to mat it behind a gold rectangle just so that it ties in with the ornament. I'm going to pop up my ornament with a mixture of U-line tape and regular 3M foam tape. And I did pop up my white sentiment over my gold mat, but I'll glue the mat completely down with glue. So I wanted this ornament to appear like it was hanging, so I have this gold and cream twine. And I'll just add a little tiny piece to the top of my ornament and I'll wrap the remaining twine on the back of the card. I just attached it down with regular scotch tape and then I'm going to add a little twine bow with the same golden cream twine and then I'll attach this bow right to the circle loop to cover that completely. That's going to finish up the card panel. I will flip it around, add my ATG tape, and attach it to my 110 pound white Nina card base. And I did have to embellish. I mean, you really don't have to, but I thought pearls would be gorgeous. So I'm using some pearls by Trinity Stamps. I am arranging them in a diagonal, and I have figured out why I always do this, and it is because well, supposedly, it is because we read from left to right, so your eye naturally kind of looks at things from left to right. So there, I have always been saying it in my videos that I don't know why I always go with a diagonal, but that is why, I think, that is why. So for my tag, for the back of the tag, I wanted to use that vellum again so i die cut a vellum oval and i'm going to gold heat emboss the same sentiment on top of the oval 
I also created the exact same snowflake background that I did for my card onto a white tag. I'm going to heat set everything at once. You're going to notice that I do this a lot for my cards um, because if you can heat set everything at once, that does save time and it does take a couple seconds for your heat tool to, to heat up. So if you can do a bunch at once, that's really great. So I am using super thin vellum. You can see that warped quite a bit. So um, you're going to see how I sort of fix that. Again, I'll add a snowbank to the bottom of my snowflake ornament. On top, I will add my gold frame. And just like I did on the last card where I just add a single deer to the center, I decided to do that again. I just felt like the trees were unnecessary and they covered up too much of the snowflake background. So I just popped up a deer right in the center. I'm going to add an all gold ornament to the back and then I will attach my vellum sentiment by adding glue only behind the gold embossed areas. I am trying to be super careful because you can see glue behind vellum. And it still wasn't super secure, obviously, so I thought the best solution for that would be to add some more pearls and then underneath the pearls, I was going to add some more glitter glue to the vellum just to attach it down. So I'll also just go ahead and accent the front of the tag. I just added three, and then I'll use the same twine to loop through the top of the tag. And then I'll do the same bow as well. Oh, actually, no, I went with a white regular satin bow. And that is going to complete the third card set. So for my fourth card, you can see I die cut the same blue ornament three times and I'm going to stamp the same pattern on each one. And the way I created the pattern is I added the two deer facing each other to the center of the ornaments and then I just framed the deer using the different snowflakes and the like the branch stamp from the set to create a nice looking kind of like a Nordic pattern. I feel that's kind of what it reminded me of. And once I figured out the pattern that I really liked, I figured why not just do a bunch of ornaments at once. So like I did on card one, I wanted to do some selective embossing. So for my deer in the center, I wanted those to be silver glitter. So I am pouring over my silver lightning embossing powder now you can see that I am trying to be careful with my embossing powder. I only want to add that silver to the deer. So the way I'm removing the excess powder from the ornament is I'm quickly flipping it over and dumping it onto my you know, scrap of paper. That way I'm avoiding the powder from sliding over the stamped areas that I don't want to be silver. Um, that being said, it's pretty much impossible to avoid getting stray powder in areas you don't want it to be. So I am using a dry paintbrush to dust off any powder that I don't want in a particular stamped area or anywhere on the ornament. So for the white portions, I am going to add the powder to the corner snowflakes as well as the diamond over the, I guess, the deer's butts. And then for my dark blue elements, I wanted to emboss the branches as well as the snowflakes directly to the left and right of the deer with this dark blue embossing powder, which is super pretty. Now I went with three colors. You can definitely do more or less. I do think it would be pretty if you just did the entire thing in one color or if you want to avoid using embossing powder because it is pretty tedious as you can see. You can definitely die cut the ornaments from white cardstock and use your colored inks to stamp your images. That would be really pretty. You can definitely incorporate more colors that way and it's much quicker. So here I'm just going to heat set all of the images and then I'm going to work on my center ornament for my slimline card. So I wanted it to stand out. I went with a navy blue ornament which I will add that silver frame to. But first I want to add my sentiment so here I'm inking it up with my Versamark, but then I realize I have the little cube, so I switch over to that for my branches. And once again, I will do some selective embossing. So for the sentiment, I want that to be white, and then the two branches will be that silver lightning glitter. I am creating this navy blue ornament twice. 
the second navy blue will be the back of my tag. And after creating this all blue, silver, and white card, I thought this would be really cool in traditional colors. So for the patterned ornaments, I would probably replace the deer with the birds that came in the stamp set. And again, frame them with the snowflakes and the branches, but maybe used gold, red, and green embossing powder. So that is definitely something you can do if you are more of a traditional Christmas card maker. I like to have a little bit of both so I can send some winter cards out. And blue and silver is also great for Hanukkah, but I am using a Merry Christmas sentiment here. But I do like to have a mixture of both color schemes for my Etsy shop. So here I am laying out my three ornaments, how I want them to look on my slimline card. I did want to dress up my blue ornaments with silver toppers, so I'm just going to attach those with my art glitter glue. And when I die cut the toppers, I only die cut the toppers from the silver and gold mirror cardstock just to save as much as I can. I did not cut the entire ornament. I went ahead and added some acetate behind my silver frame. I'm not making this a shaker card, I just really like the look of acetate on cards. So here I am laying out the three ornaments again. I'm going to attach my navy blue ornament to the back of my light blue one. And this will be my bonus tag. I will come back to it a little bit later. Here I didn't attach it on straight, so I'm going to try that again. And then I'll add my silver topper to this one. And I do add a silver topper to the back as well. All right, so we are back to the card. I am taking a slimline panel and I'm going to emboss it with this snowflake embossing folder by Dare Reese. And I like that this just added a subtle texture to the background. I didn't want anything too crazy. But I do like how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and attach the light blue ornaments flat with my ATG tape. It was a little bit difficult to add the tape to the toppers, so I'll just add glue behind those and attach them down to my white panel. I think this white panel is cut to... Eight and a half by three and a half, and my card base for slimline cards are eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I am going to pop up the navy blue ornament with my foam tape. And once that was adhered, I definitely felt like I needed some sparkle, so I'm taking some Trinity Stamp Silver Rhinestones and I'm sprinkling them around the ornaments. For the navy blue, I added some larger rhinestones, and then for the light blue ornaments, I added the smallest size to the center of all of the white and dark blue snowflakes, as well as the diamond above the deer. And this added a nice subtle sparkle to the card, but I felt like there were some blank areas on those light blue ornaments, so I'm going to add some white Nouveau drops to fill in the areas. Was this necessary? No. But it added a little something. I'm glad that I added them. And I think if you created a whole bunch of these as tags, that would be a lot of fun to embellish and add Nouveau drops to. And again, different color schemes would be fun as well. So I thought I only wanted to add a white bow to the center ornament, but I just can't help myself and I don't know when to stop. So I just decided to add some darker blue bows to my lighter blue ornaments. And I really love how this panel turned out. It's probably my favorite card out of the 10. I am going to let those bows dry because they are sliding a lot, especially on the mirror cardstock. So while those are drying, I decided to work on my coordinating tag, which is the exact same as the blue tags on my card. So I just added the rhinestones and the Nouveau drops, but before I add the Nouveau drops, I thought it would be smart to add the ribbon to the loop. I added some embellishments to the back of the tag. I added my white bow, and then I will add my white Nouveau drops, which I guess I did off camera. So here I have a navy blue panel, which I cut to cover my card base. So I attached that down 
And I'm going to add the tape to the navy blue just because my Nouveau drops were not done drying. And then I added the white panel on top of the blue and that's going to complete the card. Super pretty. This one was probably the longest, but I love how it turned out. So here is a close up. So for card five, I wanted to revisit the sweater pattern idea, but use some more neutral or masculine colors. So here I have some strips of cardstock. I have some whiter green pieces and then some skinny gold strips, which I'm going to add behind the green so that just a sliver of gold peeks through. And then I will attach the gold and green strips to the craft panel, which I cut to five by five inches. I'll be creating a five and a quarter inch square card for this design. So I'll trim off the overhanging strips and then I can start to work on my pattern. So here you can see I mounted the row of diamonds and one of the snowflakes onto an acrylic block. And I'm going to stamp along the top and bottom of this panel with that pattern that I basically created with the stamps. And you're going to see that my head gets in the way a couple times. So I apologize for that. But I wanted this pattern to be symmetrical. So everything that I do on the top of the card will be reciprocated to the bottom. So I am going to pour the red embossing powder from the kit over these lines that I created with the stamps. Now, as you can see, this powder is bright red. However, when it melts, it darkens quite significantly. And on the dark green cardstock, it melts even darker just because it is taking on the tone of the paper that's underneath since it's slightly transparent. So I didn't end up liking how it looked, so I'm going to fix that later once I heat set it. But I am going to stamp out my focal image in the center of the craft panel. And while I have it laid out on my block, I decided to stamp it onto my craft tag. And just like I did with the ornaments, I'm going to frame the main image with the snowflakes from the kit. I don't think I used the branches this time. But here you can see I'm doing some more selective embossing. I'm not sure what this is going to be, so the reveal will happen. Okay, so I went with the two deer facing opposite directions. And I do like how the red melted on the craft. It just looks super rustic. So out of all the tags, believe it or not, this one's my favorite. I just love how simplistic it is. So now I'm going in with my green embossing powder on the areas that I want to be green. And then the center, which I think is, okay, it's a large tree that's going to be gold. And I thought I would want the snowflakes on the sides to be gold, but I ended up changing my mind. For the tag, I decided to gold emboss the sentiment Merry Christmas. For the card, I decided to make the Merry Christmas red to create a visual triangle with the deer. And then for the remaining snowflakes on the craft strip, I'll just use my white powder. So I'm now going in with my heat tool to melt the powder. And here you can see the red looks very nice on the craft. However, on the green, it turned almost brown. So you're going to see how I fix that, but I'll just heat set the rest. Okay, so here was the solution for those patterns at the top and bottom of the panel, which I did not like on the dark green cardstock. I re-stamped it on some white strips and used the same red powder. However, I felt like the white was too stark. So I'm going to end up stamping the pattern again and red embossing it on another craft panel, which you'll see later on. But that took quite a bit of thinking and I did like how that looked a lot better. But to fill in the green strips, I have all of these gold and green embossed trees, which I cut from craft cardstock to coordinate. So I'm off, I guess like off setting them, green, gold, green, gold, and I will glue those down with my art glitter glue. 
And I will say even with the craft replacing the white strips, I still felt like this pattern was way too busy. Um, but I had spent so much time on it that I just called it done at that point. I still like it, it's just not one of my favorites. In fact, I was kind of frustrated with how it turned out that I'm going to kind of recreate it in part two with different colors because I think the problem was all of the very metallic powders mixed with the colors. I think I just chose too many colors for this, but my mom actually really liked this card. So sometimes it's good not to just scrap a card completely because someone else might have a totally different opinion on it. In fact, I'm sure you guys are going to tell me in the comments that I'm being too hard on myself, but but I'm just going to tape this panel onto my card base and that is going to complete my fifth card after I add a couple pearls for embellishment. I did not go overboard with these just because it is quite a busy background. And then I can work on my final tag for today's video. So here you can see my two craft tags. For the back of the tag, I went with that same pattern that I kept having to redo, but I'm going to use it sort of as an area for me to write the to and from, so to whoever the gift is going to from me. And then I'm just going to accent both craft tags with some gold sequins. So for the bow and the tie for the tag, I'm going to use my gold and cream twine again. I really love how simple and rustic this tag turned out. And this one is another one you can definitely mass produce. All right, so that is going to finish up my last tag um, for part one. I will have five more cards and tags in part two. I know this video is quite long, even longer than my normal hero arts videos, but I wanted to show you a bunch of different ideas you can use with this kit. I really enjoyed working with it and I can't wait to show you my projects in part two. Let me know which card and tag is your favorite. Also, if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post part two. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.